Welcome to another episode of Player Spotlight, everybody. We've got Scream Jungler for United joining us here today. And Scream, I'm looking forward to having my mind be expanded. I'm here to learn from you here today. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Um, but first, I want to talk about uh, where what you kind of did growing up. You know, what were you? What f sort of games did you start playing when you were younger? What what was your living situation like? That kind of stuff. What what, what was it like for a young Lucas Bracklin? <laughs> um, well, when I was really young, like three or four, my parents uh, they got divorced around then. So, but so I mainly lived with my dad a lot of my life. Um, mm -hmm. Which you know is fine. I love my dad to death. I think he's he's so awesome like he does everything um he's just a great father you know um yeah. I, I don't really talk to my mom a lot but she lives in a different state so that's kind of a given i think um but i call her every now and then you know still over and stuff sure. so um but other than that growing up i mean i've played like video games a lot my entire life like you know four years old i'd have a ps4 and i'd be playing like i forgot what the game called but it's like a dirt racing game and you know i'd beat oh, my dad yeah. in that yeah and he th he'd be like oh my god like this kid's a prodigy you know because i'm beating him right he has no idea what's going on but i'm beating him um, right uh but other than that i mean i played xbox a lot like cod you know stuff like that halo um just all those games that you know gamers have played you know back in like the 2000s and it was just awesome honestly all right what's this is a big test for you here scream what's your favorite call of duty uh, my favorite Call of Duty is Black Ops. Black Ops One. Acceptable. I'm a, I'm yeah. a fan. Okay, that that that'll pass for me. I wasn't sure if you were part of the Jetpackers. You know, the, mm -mm. maybe you were no. young enough. But fair. No. You, you you're a man of good tastes. I can see. So what mm -hmm. what made you start starting playing on PC? What was your like your first PC game? Um, my first PC game. I think I, honestly, I think it might have been Smite. I know I remember seeing ads about it, and I was like, you know, I was like. 10 or 11 at the time and i was like yo that's like mythology i love mythology like you know fifth grade mythology was like my favorite like thing when we did it in reading class or whatever so i was like yo this is awesome like i get to play as gods like let me try this out and you know it was um i played in closed beta back then because it was like 2011 or something maybe even earlier um and i was i, I thought i was really sick at it honestly like i was kind of sick at it okay i was kind of sick at it okay um but yeah, I think it was Smite, and I don't know, I just, it was a really fun game, and I really liked the, like, lore behind it, so I just had a lot of fun playing it. Who were some of your favorite gods early on that you played? Definitely Loki. I love Loki. Oh my god, dude. I have, Loki was like, I have, okay, so I have like 4,600 worshippers on Loki right now, okay? Well, I have 9,400 on Thor, let's get that straight first. Thor is definitely my highest okay. right now, but Loki okay. originally, I had like 4k on, and everybody else was like maybe sub 500. Old Loki model was so sick, dude. I can't believe they remodeled them. Seriously. <laughs> they stripped that power from you. That's where all of your power in yeah. Loki lied, was in that old model, man. That's uh, a bit yeah. unlucky for you, but lucky for everybody else, you know? Mm, yeah. Had to, had to nerf you a little bit. What was your... Uh, when you first started playing competitively, What you know? Did you, were you just playing ranked and got noticed? Like, how did that kind of start for you? Um... Well, I, I played Challenger Cup. I did play ranked, um, and I got to like Masters or a thing. I think it was. I think there was Masters back then, season one, season two. Um, that was my first time being Masters, so it was really cool. Um, and I, I I played Challenger Cup for like a year and a half before that. Like I was on a few different teams. Like, you know, I made some really good friends on those teams. Like you know, but I don't really talk to much of them anymore. But like the one Challenger Cup team that was like really important to I think me getting my the start of my career was um oh I don't remember the team name but it had, it was me Wubbin Famous Hate Marauder and oh, then yeah. what and was then, that team name I don't remember I don't remember the team name but I know that I just I loved that team man we we were all like in high school or middle school like ending middle school and like. We just had so much fun every day. Like we we'd scrim a few times and then we'd play games with each other at night and it was just it was so much fun, dude. Like, oh I loved that team so much. But um that that team was really important because we took um at the time Baskin's team, which was sore, to five games mm -hmm. in the qualifiers for SPL. And that's kinda like, you know, that was kinda like really important because like, you know, they I think they ended first seed uh in the split that they got in, or it was top two yep. or something. Um, 
Well, no, I was first seed. The, seed, the split after that. Sorry, let me let me fix that real quick. Okay. Oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um. So, me, pain and chaos. They were making roster changes, or you know, the enemy team at the time that made finals. They were breaking up basically, like they wanted to change rosters. And um, pain and chaos came to me, Marauder, and Panda, mm -hmm. and they asked if we wanted to play for them. And I was like, you know, that's awesome. Like we get to play with some world finalists, uh, some of the best, like people to make young talent better like i think pain was probably pain and chaos were one of the like definitely some of the best people to like bring up young talent i guess if that makes sense mm -hmm. um like they can they teach a lot um or they taught they taught us a lot and i think that they definitely helped mold us into the players that we were and i think it you know we did really well yeah that was a that was a team that I think everyone was really surprised when that enemy squad that made finals broke up, but with the addition of of, so of you guys, really started to look a lot like that team once again. Uh, what uh, what was it like for you? Because I, you mentioned that you know you were either in early high school or finishing middle school when you were first starting to play competitively. You must have been one of the youngest players in the whole Challenger Cup at the time. Did, what what was that like trying to balance you know? early high school, late middle school, and, and starting to play a game for money? Um, well, okay, my dad really had no idea what was going on. Like, when I showed him my first contract, uh, he was like, yo, like, this is kind of sketchy. Like, you know, like, you're making money for playing video games. And I was like, yeah, I mean, just sign it, honestly, and I, I think it'll be fine. <laughs> um, and he was like, let me read over it a few times. Um, but eventually he signed it, so that was cool. But, um, you know. Early high school, I mean, it's really not that hard. Like, I mean, some people, they take high school, like, super seriously. Like, they'll try and, like, get, like, college credits or stuff. I mean, I never really did any of that. And, you know, AP classes, stuff like that. I always consider mm -hmm. myself pretty smart. But, you know, I, I was I was never really, like, a try hard, you know, um, in right. a way to put that. So, I mean, honestly, I'd hit the ranked queues late at night, get, like, five hours of sleep, maybe miss a few homework assignments. But, you know, paid off, I guess. So. Ended up working out, and certainly, mm -hmm. you know, MMR homework. Like, yeah. you know, you yeah, got you got to make some choices when it comes to that. Your dad now, I, I know he comes to a lot of events. We see him at Worlds all the time. Even some of the smaller lands he comes to. At what point did he really like embrace the whole competitive smite thing and really dive and in, dive into it with you? Um, I think it was around the first land that we went to. It was um my first land was actually the one in Yonkaping in spain or where was it dude it was not that in was, spain uh, but it was the, somewhere the the valencia it was a dream one hack. Was the one in spain. yeah, yeah dream it was hack a dream valencia hack. is where we went yeah yeah but it, i'm talking about the one in season three it was dream hack oh, the sweden I, I forget one. the yeah, yeah the sweden, sweden one. there okay. it is yeah um and that was like the first time he, he was like yo this is like really cool like um and i think that's when he started getting into it a lot he didn't really know what was going on the first um uh, like split or so that what like what I was actually doing. I just told him I had to do stuff at certain times of the day, and he's like, "Okay, like that's fine." Um, but I think that's where he really got into it. And I mean, he's like he watches all my games. Um, you know, he he like understands the game. I think at a pretty good like good level now. So I think that's cool. And does uh, he like yeah, get I mean, on your case when you like you know you pick Poseidon into Robin? Is he like <laughs> Lucas? Like, what are you doing out there? You know, do you, you hear about no. it that way? No, no, no. Okay, first off, that game wasn't even, you know, that bad for me. Come on. Um, <laughs> I agree. I agree. Um, no, I mean, he's not, like, he's not super in-depth, but, I mean, like, if he watches the game, he'll be like, oh, they, like, threw there, or, you know, they're like, you know, mm. like, they, like you know, that sucks, like, what just happened, like, bad play, you know, stuff like that. But, um, you know, I mean, he just, he loves it, honestly. I think it's, like, pretty awesome for him, so... Yeah, I know. Uh, I know he also was a big MVP when it came to setting up the team house uh, for United. I hear tale mm -hmm. of, of of how much he was popping off there. Yeah, I mean, he is like a he's a welder for his job, so he like mm. knows how to do all the handyman stuff. So, you know, and he kind of you know, I mean, I'm like, hey, can you put this together for me? And he's like, sure. And I'm like, nice. Don't nice. gotta do anything. Yeah. Hey. He That's the move it. right there for sure. So uh, it would be remiss if we did a player spotlight on you screen without talking about. The multitude of names we've had from you over the years. Uh, Verizial, Scream, I think I'm missing at least one that you played under at the yeah. SPL level. Uh, talk to me about your, your various IGNs and, and which ones were your favorite and how you kind of came to them. 
Um, all right, let's start from the beginning. So I was Scream originally, um, but I had a I had an accented A, which is it's not allowed in the pro league. So okay. um, I had to change that. So I changed it to Verizial for my first split in the pro league, which is an original Xbox gamer tag. Okay. So so that's so where it doesn't it came mean from. anything. It was no, just it, like it, a a word. Yeah. Yeah, I just okay. came up with it, and I was like, this sounds cool. So came up sure. with that. Um, and then I changed my name to, like, Shattered or something. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Shattered. Yeah, I had a yep. three in it, too. Uh, that was also, I was, I mean, I was, I was, I was a pretty edgy, like, a few years ago, I was pretty edgy. So, you know, that was cool. Um, Gotta get it in there. Yeah, I mean, everybody goes through edgy phases, right? Um, totally. Yeah. Um, and then I think next split. I was. I think I went to Verizio one because somebody took Verizio, which was absolutely tragic. Just so beaten by that guy, seriously. Um, and then uh, I think the end of was it? Okay, this was. I guess this would be the middle split of season four. I think I was Veriz Machine. I was trying to get everybody to make their name, put Machine at the oh. end because you know I had there. We had Salt Machine on our team at that time, or he was Benji yep. at the time. But I think he, his name was Salt Machine before, and I was like. Yep. Yo, polar bear machine, panda machine, a uh, crazy machine. Because Ben was crazy toaster back in the day. Um, a lot of people mm-hmm. don't know that. But um, I was thinking like, yo, we could just be the machine team, and I think that'd be funny. And I think that'd be so like, you know, they ha- they would have to cast us like that. Come on, guys, like come on. Like, um, so I was the only one that went through with that, of course. You know, as I am a right. visionary. So you uh, you change your name, thinking that everyone is going to follow suit instantly as soon as you mm-hmm. do it, and then you end up uh, the only one with machine at the end of your name. Yeah, but I committed to it. Is the thing like you know, Mike True. has to go in. Like Mike, Mike complained to me all the time. He's like, he had have to go in because you you had to submit your rosters every week back then. Um, yep. which I guess you still do, honestly. I I don't know. I don't have to do any of that. But um, he he'd be like. He came to a point where he had to remember all my names and how to type them, and he was just like, yo, this is annoying, but, like, I respect that. And I was like, yeah, I mean. And then I got to the point, I think I think I was Scream after that. I think that was the fall split. I think I went to Scream with five M's, and, I've just, and then I won Worlds, mm-hmm. and then I think I've just kept it, so... Yeah. The five M's is uh, is iconic for Scream mm-hmm. at this point. Any consideration yep. in going down to the traditional one M, or are you sticking with five? Uh, the thing is, I want to, but, you know, high res, you know, that guy's about some gems. So come on. Mm. I can't really get that name, which is fine. You know, well, it's outplayed. not fine for me. But yeah. Um, yeah, you've been outplayed. That's all there is yeah. to it. You mentioned uh, winning Worlds. What what was that like? I mean, you how old were you at the time when you won Worlds? Uh, I was 16, I think. Yeah, yeah that's was, uh, that was, must have been a pretty crazy experience for you. Yeah, it was it was crazy, but like I was also really young, so I really it didn't really process what just happened. If that makes sense, like like I was I was happy, right? Like you know, like yo, I just won a lot of money. Like that's awesome. Like yeah, um, but like the day I was really happy. Like I was just happy, but I wasn't really like I didn't really get super excited. If that makes sense, like it was kind of like. I knew it was a goal that I wanted to do, and I did it, and it didn't, like, feel a ton different. I just knew that, like, I pulled it off, and I think that, like, I was just really happy, but I wasn't, like, jumping out of my seat crazy happy, you know, if you know what I mean. Like, it didn't really hit me, I don't think, for a few weeks, honestly, so. Um, do you know, was it when you got the, the check from World or something like that that you were like, holy cow, it actually happened, or, or what made you kind of register it? Um... I just think, like, a lot of, like, the recognition kind of was it, like, it built up over time, like, you know, I'd keep ranked and people would be like, oh my god, like, it's the world champion, like, watch out, and, I, like, you know, and then there was, like, I think, like, half a year later when we finally got our rings, I think that was also another, like, it was like, this is awesome, like, this is, like, something that I'll have forever, like, and I think that's really cool. Absolutely, for sure. What's it been like? I think it's a pretty unique experience because, you know, I, when I was in ninth grade and, and, and up and that kind of stuff, I wasn't having a whole lot of people caring about what I was doing or, you know, what I was saying at the time. It, I feel like it's kind of hard in a, a pretty unique situation to be looked, maybe looked up to, or people really want to know what you think about certain things or what you're saying from the age of 14 or younger 
throughout, you know, that's a majority of your life almost at that point. Yeah. What's it been like for you growing up in that kind of spotlight? Um, well, if you're talking like school and stuff or just like in general, um, just more in my... general, I mean, I, I don't know what, what did people at school, like know what you were doing? Yeah. Did, did you get any recognition there? Yeah. Well, I was, you know, I was part of the cool kid club. Okay. Come on. Um, <laughs> okay. so I mean, <laughs> just throw that in there, of course. Um, yeah, naturally. Yeah. Um, but a lot of my friends thought it was really cool. They were like, you know, normal high school or stuff like they just thought it was really cool. They like, they'd say like, Oh, it's the world champ. Like when I'm coming down the hallway or something <laughs> and you know, they'd give me like for it, but I, you know, those guys are awesome. Um, but generally uh, like, you know, I'd stream and people would be like, Oh, like, how do you play this? Or like, what do you do here? And I like, I just kind of like talking to people about that stuff. Cause I like thinking about the game a lot. And when people ask me questions that like, make me explain stuff to them. I think that that's really cool because it's like these guys are like looking up to me or asking me for stuff. And I, you know, it feels good to like be able to meet their expectations, I guess, in a way. Um, but yeah, I just think it's really cool. Yeah. It's been, uh, it's been a lot of fun watching that, that transformation for you as well. I know that, uh, a couple of years ago, you got really into to going to the gym and weightlifting and that kind of stuff. And, and that, that's that been a big boost for you, I'm assuming, just even maybe not in game, but the mental has got to has got to be really improved from that. Yeah. So when I won Worlds, I was I think I was like 310 pounds or something. Um, so like three months or so after that, I decided to like start taking like it seriously because I think like that's kind of like my next life goal that I wanted to achieve. I wanted to like fix my, um, fix my body. And in a way it helped me fix my mind. Right. Um, you mm -hmm. know, feel good and feel good both mentally and physically, I think is a really important part of being happy and stuff. So I really committed to that. Um, the first year I lost like 40 pounds or no. Okay. Well, the first like five months, I lost like 40 pounds or something. You know, I, I have workout. There was a workout class at school. Like we have a gym there that uh, you can sign up for, you know, I think that's pretty common in high schools. So I'm not 100 percent sure, but um, yep. but yeah, I started. I took that really seriously. But then I decided to make myself a home gym in our garage. It's like pretty high tech, honestly. Like there's a lot. Of, like, you know, we have like dumbbells and like a squat rack and like benches and stuff like that. Um, and my inspiration for that was um, Bajira. He's a he's a weightlifting guy on Twitch. Yeah, you know who that I'm talking about. Um, yeah, yeah. So I was like. I'll model like, you know, my gym after this. And I guess, you know, I think it's, it's really cool. Like, you know, I was really fascinated by the time. Um, and so now like over the course of the year, I lost like 80 pounds or so, and I'm down to like 210 right now. Um, and yeah, it's just kind of been a life changing experience. Honestly, I think my confidence has gone up a lot generally because I had self-esteem issues growing up a lot. Um, I think a lot of that's kind of gone away. I definitely still have it. Um, Cause it's not really something that you can just like fix. But, sure. But yeah, I just think I think uh, it's really important to take care of yourself physically and mentally. So I think that it was a really big step in my life, honestly, to um, f not fix myself, but just help myself grow as a person through uh, dedication, I guess. Absolutely, man. I mean, you look at that, the video of you winning worlds and between you and Mike and the transformation that you two have gone through, it's like, it's absolutely crazy. You know, you, yeah. you pog off on the stage and, and now you're pogging off in real life. You know, that's uh, that's kind of the, the, the natural progression for you there. Also got to ask you, I know uh, we, we kind of like to joke about it. Oh, here comes Scream, the goat, you know, the, the, the galaxy brain out of the jungle. Where did all that kind of come from, that, that kind of trend of, of Scream, the goat? Um, honestly, like, it, it probably just came from me and Mike having, like, just talking to each other like when we interact it's just you always know something's coming out of it like we're both so dumb that we can actually make <laughs> ourselves believe stuff that is like just untrue like like where, where we used to scrim we scrimmed in team speak at the time um because discord wasn't super prevalent but you know i'd have these like locked channels that nobody goes into ever for no reason and they're just it's just like titled like goats channels and i'd say like jordan's court <laughs> um baker's rift and i'd have screams battleground right and it's like a joke and it like after a certain time like you know it's just i don't know it, it just came from that and it's kind of just a joke that's stuck and i just think it's i don't know i just love it honestly 
Hey, uh, it's gotten us a lot of laughs on, on the casting team for sure. So, so re we're right there with you. How do you think your relationship with Smite and, and the pro league and everything like that has changed since you've graduated? Because I imagine, you know, you spent the vast majority of your life balancing this, you know, using Smite as a, as a, a fun thing, but now it's a little bit more job-like, I imagine. How do you think your relationship with the game has changed during that time? Um, when I was in school, it was just kind of something cool that I did. Um, cause you know, teams, they weren't scrimming a whole lot during the day. Then like a lot of people had like other stuff that they would do. Like, you know, a lot of people were in school when they played. Um, so that it was just something cool that I did. And I just think that it was something that kind of kept my mind like from going crazy, you know what I mean? Like in school. But, um, now that it's more like, it's more job ish, I guess, um, I still don't know how I feel about it exactly because I think that while I can put a lot more dedication towards uh, Smite in general, I think that, you know, I don't really have anything to balance out how I feel about it, if that makes sense. Like, school was kind of like a balancing factor for me as much as, like, Smite right. was for school. Um, so I, I really do have to find something else that, like, intrigues me, I think, because... I don't really have like another balancing factor. So sometimes I get really bored of the game and I won't play like outside of scrims for like a week or two straight. And sometimes I'll play a lot like, um, and I never really had that before. So I think that like, it's good that I can put more dedication in like thinking about the game, but I think that it also can like hurt me if I like overthink or underthink, I guess, and just get bored with the game because of how much free time I have. Yeah. I think that makes total sense that having that, kind of yin to the yang of smite uh is definitely a necessity at times and you and you're still i mean you're, you're still very young of course just graduated high school a little bit ago what are some of your your long-term plans as, as you look past you know what you might be doing when it comes to smite do you do you want to go to college when you're done with your spl time what what are some of the things you're you're kicking around doing uh honestly i'm not really entirely sure i actually i was talking to my friends about this a few days ago but i I really don't have any idea. Like, I th I think I want to go to college because that's kind of like a normal thing to do, I guess, in a way to put mm -hmm. that. Um, but like, honestly, I don't know what I would major in. I don't really know what I want to pursue as a job later down the line. Uh, I really have like as much as I haven't I haven't put a lot of thought into it because I've had something to do for you know the time that I would you know, put thought into it, like, you know, my later years of high school, and then now that I'm out of high school, like, I've been playing Smite, and, you know, that's kind of been my focus, so I haven't really put much time into it. Um, right. But I think I'd want to go to college, like, you know, I think it's a stepping stone that, you know, a lot of people strive for, and I think it would probably help me, because my brain is just going to mush, honestly, without school, like, <laughs> seriously, like, it's, it's just going downhill fast, like, I don't know. <laughs> Got to get one online class a week in there just to just to maintain, you know, just to hold at this point. Yeah, yeah. Might be might have to be the play. Real quick before I let you go, I do want to touch on season seven really quick because this has obviously been a bit of a change of pace for you. Historically, you've been very very successful during the regular seasons in the SPL. So far, you guys have struggled in season seven. Has that been difficult for you to to maintain that level of confidence that we were talking about earlier, despite the struggles? Yeah, so the weird thing, I think, is that during the first split, um, we didn't, I mean, we only ended seventh or whatever, like five and nine or something, but I was playing significantly worse, I think, like really bad compared to how I usually play, um, but we were still picking up wins, so I don't know, um, but I think this second split, my confidence level's gone, like, to, know, to where it normally is, I think that I've played really well, honestly, like a lot of the, like, I don't know. I don't know the way to word it, but I, I'm just confident in my ability this split, and I really wasn't last split, but it's not really translating the wins. I, so I don't know if it's like a team issue. I don't know if it's like I'm playing selfishly or something, um, but it's just something that we're going to have to figure out come like, you know, a few weeks. And I think that if we don't, we're going to be in some trouble. But personally, I'm confident, I think, in my ability and my team's ability to figure it out. So, yep. Well, you wouldn't be Lucas Brecklin otherwise, man. That's the, that's the yeah. MO for you. Thanks for the time, man, and, uh, and take it easy.